Welcome everyone to Biology 120, week number six. This is a very busy week for us in this term. So let us see what we've got going on. We've got a lot. Last week you learned about DNA, the molecule of heredity and how it replicates. You learned about mitosis, which is a way that the nucleus divides, the chromosomes divide. You learned about transcription and translation, and that's the way the DNA is actually used to make um, proteins that cells need, and most of those proteins are enzymes. So that's how all of this is connected. The DNA writes the code, has the code to make all the enzymes that do all of the work to carry out all of the biochemistry in cells. So that's how everything is connected. Take a look at your chapters 11, 12, and 47. Chapter 11 is about meiosis, and this is where you have nuclear division where you make haploid cells. That means they have one copy of each trait, and this is usually, well, for human beings, this is done when we make our sex cells. Now, this is different depending on your species because you get into some of the different um, mosses and even ferns and uh, fungi and other organisms and they don't do meiosis the same way that we do. Um, chapter 12 is all about inheritance patterns and Mendelian genetics. So Gregor Mendel was an Austrian monk. He had a lot of time on his hands and he studied pea plants. And because he counted all the offspring that he was producing from different crosses, he figured out patterns that emerged. Okay, and we still follow that, what he figured out a long, long time ago. Um, dominant recessive traits and how they're inherited and that sort of thing. There are all different types of inheritance though. Those are not the only two ways. And also you're going to take a look at chapter 47 which is all about biodiversity. Well, why is that connected to genetics and inheritance? Because there's got to be variation in the individuals in a population in order for that population to be healthy. You know, it's said today that the cheetah population has so few variations in their genes that if one disease comes along that's going to affect one, it's going to affect them all and they'll die out and they won't be endangered anymore. They'll be extinct. So biodiversity in populations is extremely important, and that happens because of inheritance and how genes are inherited. So we're going to study that this week. Read your Module 6 overview and watch the videos, especially the one on epigenetics, because that is required for your discussion board posting. You're going to discuss the epigenetics that you see in that video, and especially the agouti mouse. Um, and what happens there, you're going to describe what happens and how can you have two mice that look so totally different but have exactly the same DNA. That's where epigenetics comes in and I'm going to talk about that again in a second. Um, you're also going to discuss nature versus nurture. So do your characteristics come from your genes, from your DNA, or do they come from your environment and how you were raised and what has happened to you and the stressors and the chemicals that you come across in your life and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, your environment. Um, so how much of you is contributed to making you as an individual and every other organism, of course, through your genes versus the environment, the nature versus nurture discussion. Your journal entry is all about how bacteria reproduce, etc. So go to chapter 22, section 2. This is all spelled out right there. So use that as your reference because that tells you exactly how bacteria reproduce and how they get new genetic information because bacteria just split in half. So that means that with the mother cell, when she divides in half and makes two daughter cells, they are exactly like the mother cell. So how do bacteria get new traits? You're going to be answering that. You're going to be discussing asexual versus sexual reproduction, advantages and disadvantages of each. This is going to be kind of complicated, this journal entry. You're going to talk about biodiversity and you need a definition of evolution to do that. And I have a simple definition. 
a change in genes in a population over time. Very simple. That explains evolution right there. A change in genes in a population over time. And then what's the result of that? The individuals change because their characteristics change. Where does that change come from? Pressures from the environment. Natural selection, right? So biodiversity and genetic erosion in agriculture. Um, do we contribute to this? And what this is referring to is that we only use certain types of tomato seeds to grow tomatoes in these huge industrial farms that we have now. We only use certain subspecies of cows for beef cattle and for dairy cows, for our chickens, bananas. If you look at the types of bananas that are grown in the world, there is only one variety and there is a fungus that is threatening those and if that fungus takes hold we may not have bananas anymore we're going to definitely have to change the way that we grow bananas if that does happen um, so explore that topic and it's interesting because a lot of people are getting into heirloom varieties of different crop plants like heirloom tomatoes. Ooh, they are so good. They're very difficult to ship because they get so soft when they get ripe. So by the time they would be transported to a grocery store, they'd just be mush. Uh, and that's why these big farming operations don't grow that type of tomato, even though they taste absolutely delicious. So that's another thing to think about. And also, you need to work on your slides for your final project. This week, I will be grading as quickly as I can um, that third milestone. And um, so, uh, wow, just lost my train of thought. <laughs> work on your final, on your slides for your final project. Be putting those together. Next week, you will have to finish that up and turn it in. All right, a couple of things that go along with this week. Genes equal traits, and I have mentioned that. Here are three simple traits that are ruled by single genes in our genome, in the human genome. So albinism is a recessive trait. You see that on the bottom left, that little boy who has a lack of melanin. Um, Marfan syndrome, the man in the middle who is so tall, he has Marfan syndrome, and that is dictated by a single gene, and that is a dominant trait. And so a person with Marfan syndrome grows very tall, and they have very large hands and feet. And so a lot of the time you will see them as basketball players because, of course, they're going to be very good. Uh, they do have a lot of trouble with their muscles, with their skeletons, with their backs, um, mobility issues because they get so tall. Plus, they also have a weakened aorta, and that can cause um, deadly effects. And then we have sickle cell anemia. We see some red blood cells here. You see the sort of lozenge-shaped red blood cells. Those are normal red blood cells, and they can slide through capillaries, those tiniest little blood vessels, very easily. But if a person has sickle cell anemia and they find themselves under low oxygen condition, conditions, their red blood cells sickle out like you see some of these here. And you see how they have pointy edges that catches those red blood cells in the capillaries and in the tissues and can be extremely painful and can cause tissue destruction. Um, it's very harmful to your tissues and it makes you feel terrible. Um, so that's sickle cell anemia. Those are three different traits that are governed by single genes. All right, I wanted to mention epigenetics. So epigenetics is modification of gene expression. So you get all these genes in your DNA, right? You get all this information in your DNA. You have all the information in your DNA to make any trait whatsoever and you have all that DNA in every single cell. Well, then why are the cells different from each other? Why is a skin cell the way it is versus a heart muscle cell versus a liver cell versus a nerve? Hmm, yeah. Each of those cells contains all the genetic information to, 
needed to make you a human being. So why are those cells even different from each other? Why do they function differently? Because of the genes that are turned on and the genes that are turned off in those particular cells. And that's epigenetics. If we could understand this, if we could unlock epigenetics, the turning on and off of genes, oh my goodness, the wonderful things that we could do in medicine. We could turn on um, nerves that make up your spinal cord and someone who's had a spinal cord injury uh, could have repair of that particular tissue. And you know now that that just doesn't happen. Same thing with brain cells, same th thing with heart muscle cells. They could be repaired. We could figure out how to turn off genes in cancer cells. We wouldn't have cancer anymore. This is just a phenomenal area of research, very important area of research right now in biology, epigenetics. So it's how to turn on and off genes when you need to turn them on and off. Um, that's also important, when and which ones. That's epigenetics. It's a different amount of control of gene expression over and above which genes are present. The nature versus nurture issue has been around for a long time and has been used by different groups of people in all sorts of horrible ways, especially the nature part of this. Um, the Third Reich in Germany and Adolf Hitler used this idea, it's called eugenics, to purify the human population by getting rid of people who are who were substandard according to their definitions that is a whole field of eugenics and lest you think that they were the only ones who believed in this no 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 no, no. we had a whole eugenics movement in this country too we had forced sterilization of different groups of people if you're an alcoholic if you had mental illness if um you got pregnant as a teenage girl and you were poor. Um, oh, the list just went on and on. If you had genetic conditions of any type, they would sterilize you and you had no choice about it. And that happened on my side of the country until the 1970s, which is really scary. That is eugenic. So there are people who think that who you are and what you're like is made up mostly by your genetics. And then there are others who say, no, it's your environment that shapes you. And you know that your environment shape, shapes you. Um, do you come from a loving home? Have you suffered abuse? Uh, have you been through trauma in your life? Um, what have you been exposed to in the environment? What kinds of chemicals? What kinds of drugs? Um, et cetera. Your environment shapes you too. And so there's been this, this debate for many long years. How much of you as a being and of organisms in general is shaped by your genetics and how much comes from your environment? So I am going to put um, a video in the announcement of two identical twins who didn't know each other. They were raised separately. And you can take a look at them now to see how similar or how different they are, because that gives you an idea of nature versus nurture. And I'm also going to put a clip of a movie from 1956 called The Bad Seed. And it's, it's kind of a dorky movie, but it's, it's really good when you look at it and you think about it. It's called The Bad Seed. It's about a little girl, and um, her mother's mother was a notorious criminal, but you find that out very much later into the film. And the question is, did those tendencies show up in this little girl because she is a holy terror? Um, but anyway, I'll put the trailer in the announcement so you can see that. And if you have time sometime, just go watch it because it is very interesting. And there is that debate in this whole movie about nature versus nurture. 
um, the importance of sexual reproduction, because that goes along with this whole discussion, and especially biodiversity, the importance of sexual reproduction. So what in the world? Why do I have a picture of the Duggars up here? Because what I want to show you is that when you have two parents who have children, and you look at all those children, they're all different from each other. What in the world? How did that happen? Because it's the same two parents, whether they have 19 kids or however many they have. Because of this, each human parent has 8 million combinations of sex cells that they produce. 8 million combinations, different combinations of their traits that came from their mother and their father that they can put into their sex cells. So 8 million in a mother times 8 million in the father is a bazillion different combinations of offspring that you can get in human beings because of the way that meiosis works. And so you get all different offspring. Why is that important? Because yes, the offspring look different, but also their biochemistry is different. Their immune systems are different. Um, have you ever noticed that in your family? So I, I've got a simple example here. Um, my sister and I, we look a lot alike. We have a lot of the same interest in everything. We're only two and a half years apart. Um, we grew up together, of course. Um, I love cilantro. I love it. And Mexican food, on my nachos, whatever. She can't stand cilantro. She says it tastes like soap. And every time I taste it, I think, no, it tastes like cilantro. And that is just a biochemical difference between the two of us. We were raised very much alike, very much at the same time. Um, we have a lot of the same genes, but we have a biochemical difference between us. So because of these differences, this is the importance of sexual reproduction, that you get lots and lots of different offspring. So no matter what the challenge is that comes from the environment, no matter what disease comes through, no matter what environmental change comes along, no matter what kind of stressor comes along, you're hoping that some individuals in the population are going to survive. And so that's the importance of sexual reproduction. You get all these different combinations of genes coming together in the hopes that some of the offspring will survive. That's why we have sexual reproduction. And that's why all the Duggars look different from each other. Biodiversity is terribly important. It indicates the health of an ecosystem where you have a very diverse um, set of organisms in the community that makes up the ecosystem. Um, the amount of biodiversity indicates health of the ecosystem. And so when we lose biodiversity and we lose all these genes and we lose biodiversity in a particular species even, then there's going to be trouble. Um, we're gonna, going to lose the e ecosystem. We're going to lose that, lose that population or that species completely. Like I gave my example of the cheetahs. So biodiversity is related to all of this too. All right. I hope that you have a great week this week. You have a lot to do. And if you're taking the lab, you have a lot more to do. <laughs> so like I always say, let me know if you need anything. I'm here for you. M.Sigmund at snhu.edu. I'll be glad to help you. Just let me know. Have a great week.